Hi. Now, in this question, we've got to find the coordinates of the points of intersection of the curve y equals 12 minus x minus x squared and the line 3x plus y equals 4. So, if you'd like to give this a go, if you haven't done so already, I'll give you time to pause the video and as usual, come back when ready and we'll run through the work solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Now, when you're doing questions like this, where we're trying to find the intersection of two curves, we need to get involved with doing simultaneous equations. And you don't have to sketch the graphs, but it does help if you can, just to see if your solutions look reasonable. And if you did the first part of this question, you would have seen that the graph of y equals 12 minus x minus x squared was a parabola looking something like this because of the negative x squared. And it crosses the x-axis at minus 4 and 3. That makes y equal to 0 in here. Now, for this line here, we've got 3x plus y equals 4. But if we were to rearrange it, if we were to subtract 3x from both sides, y would equal 4 minus 3x. So if we were sketching y equals 4 minus 3x, it would be a line that has a negative gradient of minus 3 and crosses the y-axis at 4. So what we'll be looking at is a line, say, something like this, be quite steep as well. So I'm thinking it's going to be something like that. OK, so we'll have two points of intersection in this one, one here and another point here. And that's what we're trying to find. So let's just uh, put these equations down. We've got the curve, OK, the parabola, y equals 12 minus x minus x squared. We'll call that equation 1. And we've got the straight line, which has equation 3x plus y equals 4. OK, and that's equation 2. So when we're trying to solve these equations simultaneously, we need to use the method of substitution. And what you could do is you could directly substitute equation 1, OK, into equation 2. So we'd have 3x plus, and then we could just simply put 12 minus x minus x squared in place of y and equate that to 4. You might want to make y the subject from equation 2. y would equal 4 minus 3x. That was the equation that we used here for the line. In fact, let's just write that in, OK? At this stage, y equals 4 minus 3x. And you could then substitute 4 minus 3x in for this y. Whatever way you choose, you should still end up with exactly the same equation in x when it's rearranged. So. What I'll do is I'll go for this method. I'll just say from 2, OK, but I'll leave it up to you. From 2, we can see that y would be equal to 4 minus 3x. And what I'm going to do is call this equation 3. And I'm going to substitute that equation 3 into equation 1. All right. And if we do that, then what we're going to have in place of y is now 4 minus 3x. So we therefore got 4 minus 3x equals, and then we got 12 minus x minus x squared. 12 minus x minus x squared. Now we have a quadratic equation here because we've got an x squared term. And that means that I need to make this equal to 0, so I need to rearrange it. And I always like having my x squared term as positive, so I'm going to add x squared to both sides, add x to both sides, and subtract 12. So what we then have is x squared, if I add that to both sides. We have the x term next, minus 3x, and then I'm going to add x, so that's going to be minus 2x. And then we've got the constant here, 4, and then I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So 4 take away 12 is minus 8, and that equals 0. So I just need to factorise this. So if we factorise it in the usual way, a couple of brackets here, and it's going to equal 0, you'll have an x here and an x here. 
and then you're going to have a minus 4 here and a plus 2 there. So you get minus 8 when you multiply minus 4 with 2. And I can see I get minus 4x plus 2x, which is the minus 2x. Okay, so we've got that far. We now know that when we've got this factorized, each factor would equal 0. So therefore, x minus 4 could equal 0, or the other factor, x plus 2, would equal 0. And that would lead on to, well, if we added 4 to both sides here, x would equal 4, or in this example, if we take 2 from both sides, x would equal minus 2. So there's our x coordinates, and just checking the graph again, we've got minus 2, so this is looking good for this point here, and x is 4, well it's slightly to the right of the 3, so that's encouraging. Now then, all we need to do is substitute these two values of x back into any one of 1, 2, or 3. Well, it's better to substitute it into 3 because it gives us y directly. So I would go for that one rather than number 1. I know that gives us y directly, but you just got more terms in it. So we'll go into 3. Okay, I'm going to go sub uh, into 3. So we'll take it when x is 4, first of all. So when x equals 4, you end up with y equaling 4 minus 3 times 4, 4 minus 12 in other words, so that's going to be minus 8. So we've got one coordinate, we'll summarize in a moment, and then to get the other coordinate we take when x is minus 2. And if we substitute that into equation 3 here, we therefore have y equals 4 minus 3 times minus 2. So we've got 4 plus 6, so that's going to be 10. Okay, so therefore in answer to our question, find the coordinates of the points of intersection. So we can say therefore points of intersection, just finalize the question. Okay, points of intersection, what are they? Well, they're going to be 4 minus 8, and the other point is minus 2, 10, minus 2, 10. And if we just glance at our sketch here, it seems to look good. 4 minus 8 is this one down here. Okay, it's not drawn totally to scale, but uh, we can see it's a negative value for the y one. And minus 2, 10, good, minus 2, 10, looks good. All right, so there you go and uh, hopefully you were able to get that right if you did uh, try it.